Hey guys, it's Jacqueline, and today I wanted to make a video sharing with you guys some of my all-time favorite Lush products, but also sharing with you guys some products that I was disappointed in, or some products that just didn't work out for me. I mean, you guys know me, I'm a true Lush addict at heart, and I've tried my fair share of products. These are some of my empty black pots that are waiting to be recycled at Lush. Like, I'm not sure if you can see how many different pots there are in here. Like, this is just one of the stacks, and these are all the different pots. Um, and this is just from the last few months. Like, I love Lush more than the average person. It's not necessary, it's excessive. Like, I've got an issue, I've already addressed that. Um, but basically, in this video, I wanted to share with you guys some of my all-time favorite products that I haven't necessarily featured in videos before or talked about. Um, and obviously, I don't want to include every single product that I love from Lush because this video would just be way too long for that. But also, on the contrary, I wanted to include some products that I was either like disappointed in or products that were like overhyped and I just didn't really think it was worth it or products that just didn't work out for my hair type or my skin type or whatever. Um, and obviously with each product I'll explain why I didn't like it. But without further ado, we should hop on into the video. Oh, and side note, if you notice that I'm missing a portion of my tooth, don't worry. If you follow me on Instagram or have seen my Instagram stories over the past few days, long story short, I chipped my tooth eating pizza. I ended up going to the dentist and got a temporary piece made to attach back onto my tooth. I ended up eating that piece the next day, so now I'm back with a broken tooth, but I'm getting a permanent piece made to attach back onto my tooth. So this is not gonna stay like this. This is just for the next week or so, so I apologize if I'm looking a little strange. But anyways, let's move on to the products. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with face masks. If you guys know me, you would know that I love skincare. I think I love skincare more than I love makeup, which is a pretty bold statement to make, but I think it's true. Um, and Lush does amazing skincare, and I think their face masks are some of the best in the game for the most part. Um, their favorite face mask that they do, my, or my favorite face mask that they do is a mask of Megaminty, and this is a face and body mask. It's bright green, and it basically is made out of kaolin clay and peppermint. It also has little scrubby Itzuki beans inside, so it gives you a nice exfoliant as well. It's super refreshing and really deep cleaning. It's amazing if you have like acne prone skin or oily skin. I've been using this face mask for about four or five years now and I'm still just as in love with it as I was the first time that I tried it. So I would definitely recommend checking this out. This is one of my all time favorite Lush products. Now I just quickly want to throw in an honorable mention for face masks. This is Odafix from Lush and this is one of their fresh face masks so you actually have to keep it in the fridge and it lasts for about one to two weeks whereas the other one has a longer expiration date and you don't have to keep it in the fridge. But Odafix is so soothing. It smells like cookie dough and it's just so gentle on the skin. So I also love this one but I think I like Mask and Magnum Minty just a smidge more. So now on the other end of the spectrum, I want to talk about a face mask that I'm not a huge fan of, and this is The Sacred Truth. And this face mask, it's not that I particularly didn't like it, it's just that I thought it was very overhyped. I heard a lot of friends speaking about it and some people online saying that The Sacred Truth was their favorite face mask ever, and it's one that I had actually never tried before. So I decided to try it out, and it has papaya inside and green tea and wheatgrass. It's supposed to really help enzymatically brighten your skin and kind of refresh your skin. So I ended up trying it out, and I honestly was really disappointed with it. I found it kind of smelled like kitty litter, which I understand it's made out of like kaolin clay and talc. Um, but it didn't smell the best, and honestly, I didn't find out that it did much for my skin. I found when I rinsed this guy off, my skin really didn't look that different. Like the skin tone was the exact same, it didn't look brightened or anything. And when I touched it, it didn't feel that different either. If anything, it felt a bit dehydrated and a bit dry. So I was just kind of generally disappointed with this. I mean, it didn't have like an extremely bad reaction and break out from it, or like, I don't know, have something crazy happen. But yeah, for all the hype that I heard and all the great reviews I read, I was just kind of like bummed out about this. I didn't think it was up to par with the rest of the Lush face masks that I've tried. So I don't know, maybe this would be worth kind of testing out in stores first before you buy it. It just didn't really work out for me. Okay, so I know that I said I was going to try to include products that I don't normally talk about on my channel, but I adore these products so much so that I couldn't not talk about them. First up is Dark Angels. This is my daily face cleanser. This product is absolutely incredible. It's amazing for my acne prone skin. It gives you a nice deep clean that's not too abrasive, but it also is really like refreshing, but it doesn't leave your skin feeling tight and dry, which I absolutely love. It's a charcoal based cleanser so it smells really earthy and you can't even see it on camera because it's so dark. But this is absolutely incredible. I've been using this for about a year and a half now and I think it's absolutely amazing. Also, I couldn't not include my favorite, my ocean salt. I'm addicted to this stuff. I've been using it for like four or five years now and I notice such a big difference when I go without using it for a couple of weeks. But basically this is an exfoliant that I use on my skin and it's made out of like limes and sea salt and vodka. So it's super brightening on the skin and it really makes your complexion look way more easy even in glowy. So I highly would recommend checking this stuff out. Even if you just try it on like one of your hands and you see the difference from like the back of your hand to the other one, 
it's like a world of a difference this stuff is absolutely amazing okay so now let's move on to a product that I'm not a huge fan of this is a shaving cream and this is called ambrosia and I'm just generally not a fan of it it's not that I dislike the smell or dislike the feeling but it's like this cream I'm not sure if you can tell let me try to dunk it around it's like a thick cream which is actually super moisturizing and really soothing on the skin but I find that it actually clogs my razor which is just the biggest pain that it's not worth going through the effort of using this to like clean up my razor every single time even after just like one like shave of my leg it like clogs it all up and then I have to take like five minutes getting all the product out so yeah it's just generally a big pain and I don't think that it's worth the effort I've tried other shaving creams from Lush I've tried to fluff which is that pink strawberry shaving cream and that one just doesn't clog my razor so I prefer using that one to this so yeah I would probably avoid this if your razor gets clogged easily I don't know maybe it's just the razor that I'm using but there's no way that I can shave my legs without completely ruining my razor so I would just be cautious of this product now going back to a product that I love from Lush, this is Celestial Face Moisturizer. And this is basically just the most perfect face moisturizer in the world. It's not too greasy, it's not too light, it's just great for every day. It's made out of like almonds and vanilla, so it's really soothing and it just smells really good. And since it is such a gentle, like basic face um, moisturizer, I feel safe recommending this to all my friends and family. And all the people that I've tried it out that I've recommended it to, they all say that they love it and that it's like changed their skin. So I really, really love this product and I can't really see me using anything else, at least for a long time. Okay, next I wanna talk a bit about shower gels. Now shower gels are one product from Lush that I think they do really, really well. Oh, I meant to mention actually at the beginning of this video, a little side note, um, I'm not going to include any bath bombs, bubble bars, or bulk soap in this video, just because I think all of those products are done amazingly well as well. It's ma amazingly well as well, does that make sense? I think all of those products are really well done, and I haven't had any negative experiences with any of those types of products, and I think with those products, it just kind of comes down to scent preference. Like, if you like the smell of the product, you'll probably like the product. Um, so yeah, I didn't really want to include all of those, but I will include it in the description box, some of my favorite products from those categories in case you're interested. Um, but anyways, back to shower gels. I think they do shower gels really, really well, and again, I haven't had any really negative experiences with the actual product itself, but I do have some issues with some of the fragrances. Now, Lord of Misrule is one of the good ones. I think it's amazing. I think it smells so delicious. Um, it's a really unique scent as well. I am like completely out of this though. Another shower gel that I really like is Yuzu and Coco. It's like an orange yellowy kind of color and it smells like creamsicle, coconutty goodness. It's amazing. Um, I also like It's Raining Men and Happy Hippie. Those smell really good to me as well. Um, but yeah, they lather amazing and they're just my favorite shower gels in the game. Now, that being said, there are a couple of shower gels from Lush that I'm not a huge fan of. And it's not because the shower gels didn't work or they didn't lather or anything like that. It just comes down to fragrance. Now, I feel like I'm someone who isn't that picky when it comes to fragrance. I mean, I do normally go for like vanilla, sweeter scents, chocolatey, coconutty scents, things like that. But I'm not too picky. I pretty much will use anything. But I cannot stand the smell of Snow Fairy anymore. Now I'm sorry, some longtime Lush addicts probably just gasped because Snow Fairy is a very popular fragrance at Lush and it comes out seasonally every Christmas and it sells out super quickly because it's like one of those crazy popular products. So I know a lot of people are probably not going to agree with me on this one. But I cannot do Snow Fairy anymore. And I think a big reason for this is because my mom uses it so, so much. She loves the Snow Fairy fragrances from Lush. And she has bought in every single Snow Fairy scented product and every single comforter scented product and every single bubble gummy kind of scented product. Um, and I just can't deal with it anymore. I think I'm done. I think I've hit my limit. So yeah, I hate to say it. And I know a lot of you guys are probably going to be heartbroken that I'm not a Snow Fairy fan. But I just don't think I could do it anymore, guys. I think I'm done. Okay, so the final category of products that I want to share with you guys are some hair care products. And I do have quite a bit here, so we might as well dive on into it. Um, one of my favorite shampoos from Lush is Curly Whirly. Now, I've gone through at least six or seven pots of this. Um, I just think it's so good. And this isn't even necessarily like an everyday shampoo. It's something that I will use once in a while to kind of give my hair like a boost of hydration. It makes my hair super shiny and just feels so, so soft. It's like a coconut-based shampoo, and it actually comes in a pot, which is probably a little strange to some of you guys if you've never tried anything like it but it's like a thick like 
paste almost, but it's not sticky at all. I don't want to turn anyone off by saying that. But there's chunks of coconut inside and it's really luxurious. Um, and I just think it's absolutely amazing. So if your hair is needing some moisture, I would definitely recommend checking out Curly Whirly. It's definitely my favorite shampoo from Lush. Now for some hair products that I'm actually not a huge fan of from Lush is actually their conditioners. And I've got American Cream here, which I wanted to love so badly because I hear so many people who also love this product. And I do love the fragrance. It smells absolutely incredible. I will give it that. But my big issue with Lush's conditioners is that there's no silicone in the conditioners, which I do appreciate because it's actually better for your hair not to have silicones in there. Just because silicone is one of those ingredients that's just kind of like a filler ingredient, it doesn't really do much. It makes your hair artificially feel really silky and smooth when you're in the shower, but then when you come out, it doesn't actually leave that feeling in your hair. So it's not really that great of a hair product, but I do find that with a conditioner that has silicone, it makes my hair like soft enough to kind of detangle it and comb it out while I'm in the shower. Whereas with this conditioner, it leaves my hair feeling so squeaky that I can't actually comb through it. I find it makes it really tangly. Although it does leave my hair feeling very moisturized, it's just such a big pain to comb up my hair when I'm out of the shower after using a conditioner like this that it's not really worth it for me. So I do find the best way to use this conditioner is to actually mix like one kind of squirt of this with one pump of my like traditional like regular drugstore conditioner and I find that by having that little bit of silicone in there that it makes this product work a lot better. So those are kind of my thoughts on the Lush conditioners. I think if you have shorter hair or maybe more fine hair, they might work out better for you. But if you have thick hair or long hair, I would say no. Okay, moving on to a product that I love from Lush. This is the No Drought Dry Shampoo. Now I have tried many shampoos in my lifetime and I find that the aerosol like spray cans make my hair feel like wet and gross. Even though they look good, it makes my hair feel extra gross, which I don't appreciate. So I really like this no drought dry shampoo because it's a powder base. So you actually kind of pour it into your head, or pour it into your head, you pour it onto your hair, um, which can get a little messy, and it definitely took a little bit of like getting used to using a powder formula, but I find that this is way more effective in actually absorbing the oils, and the fragrance of this is really nice. It smells like lime, and it smells really citrusy. I've had this bottle for literally so long. I bought it back in 2012, and it expired in 2013. Like, that could not be good, but the product Product didn't seem to go bad and I still have so much left so I keep on using it but this has literally lasted me four years like oh I would highly recommend this product it's a really great dry shampoo and they do sell it in a smaller size if you don't think you're gonna go through all this but would definitely recommend okay the final product from Lush that I'm not a huge fan of is actually a hot oil hair treatment and this is called Tangled and oh buddy, did it ever live up to its name. Now I've tried some other hot oil treatments from Lush that I absolutely love, so I was not expecting to dislike this product as much as I did. And I think I disliked this product the most out of any other product that I've tried from Lush, which was really surprising to me. So basically what you do, you melt this little like stick, or not the stick, but you melt the product on the end of the stick in boiling water, and then you apply the paste that it makes into your hair and you let it sit for 20 minutes, then you shampoo it out. So this one in particular is supposed to help like detangle your hair and help soften it and hydrate it so I was really excited for it so after about two or three minutes I noticed that the product had started to set into my hair and I noticed that it was kind of like hardening and like kind of drying like white glue and at this point I was kind of freaking out because I was like oh my gosh it feels like I've got white glue in my hair but I kind of was trying to calm myself down I was like maybe by the time I shower it'll kind of like rinse out and it'll be fine no it did not when I got into the shower, I had to shampoo my hair like four, five times to finally get the product out of my hair. I also had a comb in there and I was combing out my hair. I have no idea what went wrong with this. I have another one, but I'm a little afraid to try it again. Maybe I just had a wonky product, but it seriously felt like I had white glue in my hair. And it was a pain to get out. I mean, to be fair, by the time I got it out, once I got out of the shower, my hair did feel very soft but it took me like an hour in the shower to get it out. So I don't know if that's normal. If anyone else has tried this product and has had that experience, like let me know. And if that's how the product's supposed to be, I don't know, I just don't really think it's worth it. I can get my hair feeling soft by using other products and I don't have to waste like half a bottle of shampoo to get it out. So I don't wanna end this video off on a negative note. And I do have one more product to share with you guys that I really love. And this is RMB Leave-In Hair Moisturizer. Now, I love this product so much because it leaves my hair so silky and so soft. It also is a little bit of like a heat protectant, which I like as well, but it smells amazing. And it leaves a fragrance in your hair. And I've gotten so many compliments on like my hair, which is kind of weird, but people be like, oh, your hair smells so good. And I'm like, girl, it is all RMB. This stuff is life-changing. 
Mm, it's so good. Now I have heard some people complain and say that it kind of weighs their hair down and that it's a bit too heavy for their hair. Now I don't know if you noticed, but I've got pin straight hair and I've got absolutely zero chance of getting volume into this hair, so I'm not really worried about that. My hair is going to be stuck to my head either way. But this does leave my hair feeling super soft and it makes it look really shiny, which I really like. So those are all the products that I wanted to share with you guys today. Like I said, I've been using Lush products for like six plus years and it's taken me that long to compile a list of what, five products that I dislike. So I would say for the most part, you're pretty safe to try out any Lush product. And if you have any other questions about Lush products, I mean, leave me a comment down below. I probably tried it out, so I'd love to give you my thoughts on it. But I hope this was helpful and I hope maybe this made you make some decisions or make a list of products that you want to try from Lush. Feel free to let me know some of your favorite products from Lush or some products that didn't work out for you in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys very soon. Bye!